Live. News 8 at 6 starts now. Jennifer is dead, and Fotis and Michelle Traconis intended that to happen. It is, and I will say this multiple times, speculation. It's conjecture. It's guesswork. The Michelle Traconis trial now in the hands of a jury after attorneys deliver powerful closing arguments. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Dennis House. I'm Ann Nyberg. After 29 days of witnesses, evidence and experts, a six-person jury will decide if Michelle Traconis conspired to cover up a murder or was an innocent girlfriend caught up in a violent homicide. Traconis is charged with conspiring to kill Jennifer Farber Dulos, tampering with evidence and hindering prosecution. For the very latest on what happened today, we go to News 8's Eva Zamaris, who's been covering the case now for four and a half years. She's live outside Stanford Superior Court tonight. Eva? Good evening to you, Dennis and Ann. The courtroom was packed today. It was the busiest day in the courtroom during the trial so far. Now in that courtroom, we're all five Dulos children surrounded by family and friends. Jennifer is dead and Fotis and Michelle Traconis intended that to happen. The magnitude of this day could be felt inside the packed courtroom Tuesday as the state and defense presented their closing arguments in the trial of Michelle Traconis, nearly five years after Jennifer Farber Dulos disappeared. There is nothing to suggest that Michelle had any clue about what was going to happen in New Canaan on May 24th, 2019. The state went first, breaking up their closing argument into two parts. State prosecutor Michelle Manning began by outlining what they believe happened the day Farber Dulos went missing, arguing it's clear through the evidence. Traconis conspired with her then boyfriend, Fotis Dulos, to kill his estranged wife and helped him cover up the crimes. There's blood spatter throughout the garage, throughout the undercarriage of two cars, footprints and swipes of blood. Her blood-soaked shirt and bra thrown out in the garbage. She also pointed to a planned phone call Traconis answered from Dulos's friend in Greece. Their alleged cleanup in Farmington, their drive to Hartford that night, the detailing of the red Toyota Tacoma and Avon, and the timelines they wrote out. She did not know that Fotis Dulos planned to harm her. Everything suggested that things were going well, and it was to the contrary. But Traconis's defense attorney, John Schoenhorn, reiterated Traconis wasn't involved and called points made by the state conjecture and guesswork. Because she was romantically linked with Fotis, that she was somehow involved in this nefarious, murderous plot. He also spoke about the control he says Dulos had over Traconis and how he may have manipulated her and others. And he died without ever acknowledging his actions or admitting his role even to his own children. Traconis has been charged with conspiracy to commit murder, tampering with evidence and hindering the prosecution, but she's maintained her innocence from the start. And maybe some of you remember from English class in high school, every script has three acts, doesn't it? The first act was the premeditation and killing of Jennifer Dulos. The second act was the cover up through the destruction of evidence and the defendant's lies. And now we've reached the third act, except she doesn't get to write it. You do. After closing arguments were given, the jury received instructions on how to proceed. It is now this court's duty to instruct you on the law, which applies in this case. Once they did, the jury began their deliberations. They have about 200 exhibits and testimony from dozens of witnesses to consider. Court has adjourned for the day. Deliberations pick back up tomorrow morning. Live in Stanford tonight, I'm Eva Samaras, News 8.